Most people in life are looking for how to make a life worth living and retirement worth having. When a person is celebrating life, they're pursuing their goals and they're seeking results from the efforts that they put forward to make a living. There are certain people who work in the retail world who make hourly wages. There are certain people who work in the manufacturing world who make hourly wages. There are certain people who work in the financial world who make either hourly wages, commission wages, or salary wages. When we think about how people earn a living, we must take it down to the mathematical science of earning. I have a late sibling who was an accountant, and the one thing that she gifted me that I really valued was a simple chart that she did in a matter of seconds because of her skill sets in Excel that gave me a whole list of what it cost for living. But what I mean is that she gave me a chart of hourly wages and then their annual salary and basically the implication to me would give me how much would actually be take home from that. I really valued that chart. I kept it and I even made a duplicate of it for people in my programs because it really helped them to define how much they were earning for how hard they were working. You see, the math of a business is determining how many hours does it take me to produce this marvelous service gift or whatever the hell you create to earn the wage off what it makes. At the same time in service businesses, how many hours does it take in a matter of seconds for some people who are really good at things or a matter of minutes or hours of people still learning things to make a living. Once we provide ourselves a really good process of sale, what we call a sales qualification process, we can often sell a customer quicker. Once we establish how to, to speak to someone in a store, to establish how many things they're really looking for, we can make and rack up a really large sale. I did this quite regularly in the retail environments that I worked in, either prior to getting a salary job, when I sold photographic equipment, when photos were still a thing, and actually print houses for them still existed, instead of all the electronic media we're doing now, which actually can be deleted by the companies in seconds. It's a risk to us. Every person with a phone that uses their phone for photographs absolutely has to go to an office supply store and buy one of those little photo printing machines. You really need to do that. Because social media companies can just hit one button and all your shit is gone. All the things of your entire life history and photographs you're sharing with your friends and family online can disappear. That's happened to me twice. Completely twice. And it's been painful because I didn't have backups anymore because someone stole my cell phone in Ohio. Pretty sure I know the Wiccan who did it, the Pagan who did it, the Druid who did it, but I can't prove it because he's such a marvelous liar. And since I've been here, someone's been hacking my cell phone and deleting things on my online accounts without my permission. Really important legal photographs. Really important family photographs. And that was immoral. Not to mention, highly illegal in the terms of cybercrime they've been committing, identity theft they've been doing, and fraud they've been attacking my life with. In life, we have moments of time to choose whether we live in the light or whether we live in the dark shadows. Someone calls himself dark side. Congratulations. What are you trying to produce in your life? What are you trying to establish with people? You're trying to establish the fact that you might look like Jesus Christ, but you're a bastard of Satan, and you're a player on computers, and you're a destroyer of life? Or are you just trying to produce yourself a cool sex life as a porn addict? You see, I can make fun of these people who are players, but last night I wasn't even allowed to go to sleep fully by the Lord because of a player who likes to play over by the stake and shake which is now defunct. He likes to sit there with an elderly couple who literally lie, steal, and cheat people out of clean environments. What I mean by that is that they receive all kinds of coinage and all kinds of food from people who are loving and kind and are in the mood to help someone so that they can say to people, I helped a homeless person today. I helped a person, person of poverty today. But then what they do is they leave their trash all over that fucking area. They don't take the milk that they're given, and they leave it there and leave a mess. I don't like that. If I drop something, I do my best to pick it up and put it in my own trash receptacle where I know I can go and my trash is welcome. 
in life we have moments of time to choose our maturity and maturity in life is recognizing where our boundaries and rights that have been so fought for so bled for so established for begin and end it is enablement thinking to allow a child to think they have the right to steal it is entitlement thinking for any human being to believe that they have the right to steal from others and openly you're doing it all in front of God so when you thought you were going to play with my property and edit my property and throw things away you had no fucking right to do it under any law of the day and I'm certainly sure that when you step yourself in front of the gates of heaven and the chambers of hell that Gabriel the angel that sits there and dwells will go huh you thought Jesus told you to do that huh you made a choice to do that huh Jesus died for your sins, but he didn't die for that.